This lesson covers group policy preferences, which was an addition added as part of Windows Server 2008 from a technology Microsoft actually acquired through another company acquisition. Whereas policies hard set a value that can't be changed by the user, preferences can be used to set initial values that the user could then change if you wish. And these are generally a lot more friendly to use. For example, I have user and machine preferences. I can go to the control panel and I can configure a lot of the control panel settings and options through a preference. For example, I could say I want to create a new folder option related to Windows Vista or above. And notice this looks very similar to the experience I would get through Explorer. And I can go and set these values. So I say, well, I want to show hidden files and folder. I don't want to hide extensions. I don't want to hide protected operating system files. So I could actually go and set these values and click apply. Additionally, a great feature of preferences over standard policies is that under this common tab, I can do item level targeting. So within this particular group policy object, for every single preference, I can do targeting for if this particular preference setting should apply or not. So I can actually say, I might base this decision based on CPU speed. I could base it on an IP address range, a language. Any of these items can be used to decide should this preference apply or not. So huge flexibility. Notice this WMI query, which is what I can do for a standard group policy object, but so much more flexibility. So this is really a great feature to give you far more granularity than I could typically ever do with standard group policy policies. I'm using preferences here. And this is for every single separate item I define. So I don't want to do targeting. I'm just going to run these and set these options for every machine. So I've created a new preference. But notice also, I can do things such as printers, set local users and groups, set power options, configure the start menu. Again, I can do a new start menu and I can control how my start menu is configured. But again, these are just initial configurations. The user could override this should I allow them to. Now, what I can say under my common is to apply once and do not reapply. So that's not the default. So this would let the user then overwrite it. If I don't check this, every time this policy refreshes, it will overwrite what the user set. So I have to go in and check that if I want to just make this an initial configuration. So I actually don't want that part. So I'm going to delete that. I can do Windows settings. So I can do drive mapping. I can set environment variables, configure file actions such as copying, folder, registry settings. And I'm actually using a drive map here. So I actually use this to map a drive to my software share. And I say, always use the letter S. Even if it was mapped already, I want to replace that existing mapping with my new one. So think what you might use logon scripts today for. Maybe it's assign printers, maybe it's to map drives, maybe it's to form some configuration. I can now do all of that with preferences instead. Likewise, at the computer level, similar types of things are available to me. So really take time to look at the capabilities of preferences. Look what you're doing with scripts today and see if you can replace those scripts with preferences. Remember that item level targeting you can use as well. That gives you even more power and flexibility than you have with a traditional script. This concludes the lesson on group policy preferences.